imagine you have a company and that company has a marketing department. One of the ways in which they market is via email. And they send thousands of emails every week. But the question recently came up, which of those emails are the most effective at actually driving sales? This is a very common question and asked in many companies today. This is where Zeta comes in. In today's demonstration, we're going to take data from three separate but common system types, a CRM system containing customer information, an ERP system containing sales information, and the third system supplying data in this example would be an email marketing system. I'm going to demonstrate here for you just how easy it is using our artificial intelligence to bring this data together from three different sources, combine it into a single unified data model, enrich that model, and then create some analytics right here on the fly that'll tell us some key things about this company's marketing operations, how effective it is, and what it's actually doing to drive and contribute to sales. First, let's take a look at the Inzeta homepage. Since we're going to begin with a raw data set and illustrate how it's brought together with Inzeta, we're going to begin with InModeler. As you can see, we have a completely blank canvas here because we haven't connected to or loaded any data yet. So let's go ahead and start loading some data files into Inzeta and see what happens. A quick note about the data that we're working with today. Our data set consists of three separate files. They're just your typical raw data, comma-separated value files, although they could also be text, text files or JSON or XML or Excel file. As we load our first file, we can see that the artificial intelligence has already begun profiling the data in the file. It's tagging them all as attributes and strings, so I'm going to go ahead and commit that load. And I'm going to flip over to the LDM, and you can see the data has been converted to the first cluster in our model. Now I'll go ahead and load our second file. And this was, if you recall, the data set that contained the sales information. So here we see our first fact has been encountered. And uh, Inzeta has correctly identified that it is a fact, even though there are no other numeric values in the data set that are attributes. Uh, the AI can tell the difference there. Um, so this looks good. So I'm going to continue with the loading. And I'm going to flip over to the LDM here so you can see the progress. And now let's load our third file, which is the one that contains the marketing email information, the data about every single email that this company had sent, to whom, and uh, what day and time it was sent on. Now, these three clusters are all here and present because they've been loaded, but they're still separate. We haven't actually brought them together, and we need to bring them together in order to be able to ask questions such as which combination of email tactics resulted in the most net sales. So that's, this is where the AI comes in. So I'm going to activate that by refreshing up here. And over here on the right, you'll see Inzeta is coming back with some recommended join criteria. It's recommending that these data files can be joined or brought together at this glue point using this field because this field in both data sets contains the same type of information based on the profile Inzeta has observed. So that sounds good to me. So I'm going to click join and let it complete its join. Now, Inzeta comes back with another recommendation. Since we've joined two of the three clusters, we still have one remaining. Uh, and Inzeta recommend, is recommending a second join here with these other two fields. So I'll, I'm OK with that as well. So I'm going to click Join. And now you can see the cluster updates. And we have everything interconnected along with the join point indicated with that orange dot there. But we're not done yet. The next step of Inzeta's artificial intelligence will be to recommend enrichments to this data. Uh, enrichments, or, or one-click enrichments as we call them, are preloaded data sets that are built into the Inzeta platform. These enrichment data sets can then be added to data that you've loaded or connected to with Inzeta in order to make your data easier to work with or to enrich its analytical value. Inzeta's ever-growing list of one-click enrichments are designed to increase the value of your business data and also make it easier to work with. Our library of one-click enrichments is made up of lots of different types of data sets. For example, there are basic enrichments such as date hierarchies that allow you to organize single transaction dates into quarters, weeks, months, fiscal quarters, weeks of year, etc. And then there are also more advanced enrichments such as advanced customer demographics for locations across the United States a number of healthcare industry related data enrichments and and we also have a weather enrichment which includes weather information historical weather information going back for 5 years for every location in North America with these enrichments all you need to do is 
Click once to bring them into your data set, and you can then use them as filters and criteria for any of the visualizations or analysis that you do within the Enzeta platform. So let's see here what Enzeta has recommended for the data that we've loaded. As I mentioned before, Enzeta does get to know your data, so it's going to make prescriptive recommendations about enrichments here. And the first one we see is uh, one called date dimension. Uh, so I can click explore here to just get a quick look at what that is. And what that's, rec what that's going to do is take that, that one date field that we have, if you recall, from the transaction file, uh, which was a six-digit numeric date. And it's going to simply associate week, month, day of week, quarter, month of year, et cetera. A lot of different, a lot of, basically a lot of other ways to, uh, to show off or showcase date information. Why is this valuable? Because invariably down the, down the line, you might have someone who may ask, uh, well, show me these numbers rolled up by quarter or show me these numbers rolled up by fiscal quarter. And by having this type of a date enrichment in here, it makes it very easy to simply select that attribute as a, as a filter or a breakpoint for your visualizations or analytics. Uh, you don't, it avoids you from having to go through the process of mapping individual calendar dates to quarters and fiscal quarters and years and weeks and months and things like that. In Zeta has also noticed that we have a zip code contained in our data model. It knows that because it detected it on the profiling when we first loaded the data set. Now it's recommending that we add the geographic dimension, so let's click explore and see what's inside that. So that's going to attach onto the zip code field in our data set, and it's going to associate about 10 additional values here, and it's going to add things like time zone offset, time zone, metropolitan statistical area, city, county, state, latitude and longitude, uh, and daylight savings time, and time zone. Having these additional values associated, number one, saves time and is going to be incredibly valuable. Let's say if we ever wanted to plot this data on a map or a choropleth or some sort of heat map showing the data laid out by location, it's a lot easier to do that when you have the latitude and longitude associated already. Now, these are just two enrichments that I've shown you here, but we have an ever-growing list. We're up to about 40 different enrichments now. Uh, some of the more interesting one contain, ones contain customer detailed, uh, customer de demographics, socioeconomic socio data, geospatial data, as, along with uh, a weather almanac going back five years with local weather conditions for every location in North America for the past five calendar years. Now that that's been added and we see our number of attributes has ticked up, let's flip back over to the logical data model and take a look at what we've built. So now you can see our fully fleshed out data model. Over here on the right is our original source data clusters, uh, including the customer ID, which is the join point where everything was glued together. And then we see our enrichments fa factoring in here as well. We have the, the geographic dimension that's been added onto the customer zip code as well as the date dimension that is associated with that transaction date. And as I said before, these enrichments aren't just adding blank fields that you need to go out and fill in. If I go over here and preview some of these fields, we can see that they, they have indeed been populated with the correct information that corresponds to that zip code value in each of the rows that the information was added in. And if I go to something like state here, I also you can see that I have the FIPS code, the state of abbrevi abbreviation, as well as the state name to work with. All of this gives me incredible flexibility in terms of how I want to present this information without me having to go hunt for these individual uh, associations around uh, zip code or location. It's all there built in, and I've just instantly added it to enrich my data set to improve its value. Now this is starting to look pretty good. Even though it was a relatively small data set that we began with, this looks like a pretty good sized data model. And now we're ready to begin analytics and visualization on it. And I want to warn you, things are going to start to move pretty fast from this point. So we're done with InModeler. So let's switch back over to InBoard, which if you'll remember was the design studio. And we're ready to start creating some dashboards and building some visualizations. So to do that, it's real simple. Let's just instantiate a new dashboard so we get a new blank canvas here. And let's add some elements to our dashboard. So let's drag over a report widget. Uh, by the way, some of the other widgets you can uh, include on a dashboard would be controls, which are like user-definable filters, things like drop-downs, sliders, radio buttons, which will affect what's displayed on the report. So kind of like a dynamic filter or user-configurable filter. You can also include an image widget or a text widget if you wanted to add some color or some other details or annotations to your dashboard. 
But typically dashboards, the main building block of dashboards is reports. So uh, let's add a couple of report widgets here. And now I'm going to show you just how easy it is to populate each of those reports with data from our data model that we just finished creating and how fast everything comes together. Because we took the time to carefully create our data model, everything we need to build reports and analytics is right here on the left and is organized beautifully, including all the enrichment data that we added. So if you recall from our earlier example, one of the things we wanted to be able to answer through our analysis is what is the optimal time of day to send out marketing emails in terms of producing the most in sales. So to do that, it's really simple. And Zeta has already created a couple of metrics. So I'll find the metric that I want, which is the sales by day and time metric, and just select it and drag it into the report. And now you can see that's updated with some information. And I'm going to add a few more elements to my report widget here. I wanted to get the email day or the day of the week that the email was being sent so I can view sales across that attribute. And then let's pull email time over as well. And in just three or four steps, we've built our first report visualization using Inzeta. And you'll see that it's in a table value, which is fine if I just wanted to look at the values in columns like this, but I can also go over to the visualizations tab and I can apply a, uh, let's pick a bar chart for this. So now I can see my data in a uh, standard bar chart. I can select different colors here. I can add labels. I can change the size of the legend, add a trend line, multi-axis analysis. So there's a lot of different options here for how I can visualize the data. And that was the bar chart. I can also express it in a column chart. So just like that, we've created our first dashboard using data that we just loaded into and modeled about 15 minutes ago. And creating more report widgets on this dashboard is as simple as dragging over blank widget objects and then populating them with data elements from our data set. The user has complete design freedom on these dashboards. They can add controls and labels and other graphical elements to make them look exactly as they want. There are also tabs on here to show where the pages would print if you wanted to create a dashboard for PDFing or printing. That's also possible as well. So to give you an idea of what a more built out dashboard might look like, I'm going to flip over to Inviewer here and load up a dashboard that I created earlier. And this one only took a few more minutes to create. But now you can see an example of some of the additional visualization types. Here at the bottom, we have a nice map of the United States, which is populated with sales markers for each of the sales in our data set. And we, here we have them grouped by time zone. So we can see the sales and then toggle different time zones so we can see the concentrations. And then we can zoom in on this map down to a pretty granular level, getting down to uh, street and road level. So uh, this gives you an idea of the kind of flexibility and capability. And this map was made possible because we added the geographic dimension. We were able to take the zip code, which was in our original data set, and enrich it with the latitude and longitude, which is what the map uses. And that's why we were able to display our data now two-dimensionally on a nice map visualization like this. So let's recap what we saw today. We began with three separate data files, each one coming from a different system in our organization. We were able to load them into Inzeta, and the artificial intelligence organized them into a single data model built around customer and sales transactions. We then used Inzeta's one-click enrichments to enrich our data set with additional, additional values around date and geography. This enabled us to take advantage of additional visualizations and tell a much richer story using our data. And then we were able to very quickly and easily create some dashboards, analytics, and visualizations around our data simply by dragging and dropping different elements from our data model. I'd like to thank you for watching and listening to our demonstration. If you'd like more information on Inzeta, please visit our website at www.inzeta.com.